Fear is the main source of superstition and one of the main sources of cruelty. To conquer fear is the beginning of wisdom. It's easy to fall in love. The hard part is finding someone to catch you. The hardest thing to learn in life is which bridge to cross and which to burn. Most people would sooner die than think, in fact, they do so. To teach how to live without certainty and yet without being paralyzed by hesitation is perhaps the chief thing that philosophy in our age can still do for those who study it. My desire and wish is that the things I start with should be so obvious that you wonder why I spend my time stating them. This is what I aim at because the point of philosophy is to start with something so simple as not to seem worth stating and to end with something so paradoxical that no one will believe it. Men fear thought as they fear nothing else on earth more than ruin, more even than death. The thought is subversive and revolutionary, destructive and terrible. Thought is merciless to privilege, established institutions, and comfortable habits. Thought is anarchic and lawless, indifferent to authority, careless of the well-tried wisdom of the ages. Thought looks into the pit of hell and is not afraid the thought is great and swift and free, the light of the world, and the chief glory of man. It is the preoccupation with possessions, more than anything else, that prevents us from living freely and nobly. Those who have never known the deep intimacy and the intense companionship of happy mutual love have missed the best thing that life has to give. When you want to teach children to think, you begin by treating them seriously when they are little, giving them responsibilities, talking to them candidly, providing privacy and solitude for them, and making them readers and thinkers of significant thoughts from the beginning. That's if you want to teach them to think. We know very little, and yet it is astonishing that we know so much, and still more astonishing that so little knowledge can give us so much power. No one gossips about other people's secret virtues. Collective fear stimulates herd instinct and tends to produce ferocity toward those who are not regarded as members of the herd. It has been said that man is a rational animal. All my life I have been searching for evidence which could support this. One should as a rule respect public opinion in so far as is necessary to avoid starvation and to keep out of prison. But anything that goes beyond this is voluntary submission to an unnecessary tyranny and is likely to interfere with happiness in all kinds of ways. There are two motives for reading a book, one, that you enjoy it, the other, that you can boast about it. Do not fear to be eccentric in opinion, for every opinion now accepted was once eccentric. Of all forms of caution, caution in love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. The fundamental cause of the trouble is that in the modern world the stupid are coxer while the intelligent are full of doubt. To fear love is to fear life, and those who fear life are already three parts dead. I would never die for my beliefs because I might be wrong. And if there were a god, I think it very unlikely that he would have such an uneasy vanity as to be offended by those who doubt his existence. Three passions, simple but overwhelmingly strong have governed my life, the longing for love, the search for knowledge, and unbearable pity for the suffering of mankind. A stupid man's report of what a clever man says can never be accurate, because he unconsciously translates what he hears into something he can understand. In all affairs it's a healthy thing now and then to hang a question mark on the things you have long taken for granted. I do not pretend to be able to prove that there is no God. I equally cannot prove that Satan is a fiction. The Christian God may exist, so may the gods of Olympus, or of ancient Egypt, or of Babylon. But no one of these hypotheses is more probable than any other. They lie outside the region of even probable knowledge. And therefore there is no reason to consider any of them. Our great democracies still tend to think that a stupid man is more likely to be honest than a clever man. And our politicians take advantage of this prejudice by pretending to be even more stupid than nature made them. One of the symptoms of an approaching nervous breakdown is the belief that one's work is terribly important. Really high-minded people are indifferent to happiness, especially other people's. One of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid, and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. So far as I can remember, there is not one word in the Gospels in praise of intelligence. Not to be absolutely certain is, I think, one of the essential things in rationality. 
neither a man nor a crowd nor a nation can be trusted to act humanly or to think sanely under the influence of great fear. The opinions that are held with passion are always those for which no good ground exists. Indeed, the passion is the measure of the holder's lack of rational conviction. Opinions in politics and religion are almost always held passionately. If there were in the world today any large number of people who desired their own happiness more than they desired the unhappiness of others, we could have paradise in a few years. I believe in using words, not fists. I believe in my outrage knowing people are living in boxes on the street. I believe in honesty. I believe in a good time. I believe in good food. I believe in sex. Even if the open windows of science at first make us shiver after the cozy indoor warmth of traditional humanizing myths, in the end, the fresh air brings vigor, and the great spaces have a splendor of their own. The secret of happiness is this. Let your interest be as wide as possible and let your reactions to the things and persons who interest you be as far as possible friendly rather than hostile. Everything is vague to a degree you do not realize till you have tried to make it precise. To be without some of the things you want is an indispensable part of happiness. Anything you are good at contributes to happiness. The greatest challenge to any thinker is stating the problem in a way that will allow a solution. The good life is inspired by love and guided by knowledge. When considering marriage, one should ask oneself this question. Will I be able to talk with this person into old age? Everything else is transitory. The most time is spent in conversation. Love is wise, hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. But if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance, which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet. Sin is geographical. I think we ought always to entertain our opinions with some measure of doubt. I shouldn't wish people dogmatically to believe any philosophy, not even mine. The whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves, and wiser people so full of doubts. The secret of happiness is to face the fact that the world is horrible, horrible, horrible.